Why do you give? It's a natural thing to do. To see the smile on other people's faces. Because it feels good and because that's what God taught us to do. Make people happy and make yourself happy. Because I like to see uh, satisfaction on the on these people's face when they receive it. We are we are still humans and we need to share. We need to connect, and that is why. Because it's good for the soul. It truly is, isn't it? That takes a long time to answer. For 12 years, I worked with children in conflict and post-conflict zones. The reason I give is a their children, and b if I can help them there's less chance of them sitting next to you on the underground with a Debbie explosive backpack on. Giving is all around us, and ideas of the gift pervade our individual and collective lives. But why do we give? Are there different kinds of giving? And how does giving change us? My name is Jessica Scott, and in exploring these questions, I want to look at the relationship between humans, animals, and theology as we deepen our understanding of the gift. I'm here with Shamara Fletcher from St George in the East. Shamara is part of the Open Table team. Could you tell me a bit about the Open Table? The Open Table is a community of housed, ex-homeless and currently homeless, sharing food together. So we're outside Shadwell Dealer um, in Tower Hamlet and we've just set up the open table. So as you can see, it's for the whole community, for homeless and non, um, just a table of food, fellowship, sharing. And what inspires you to give in this way? It's the fact that we live in this first world capitalist country. I said, if we are so economically advanced, why are people sleeping on the street? We are building more homes, and helping first-time buyers onto the housing ladder. Trump used the foundation as kind of a checkbook for himself. He used the charity's money to save his businesses $260,000. He also used the charity's money to buy portraits of himself. I'd like to talk a little bit about party donors. It seems a little bit like these gifts have strings attached. Is that sometimes the case? So I think there's a huge problem with party funding. Um, I'm quite radical on this. I would actually ban large donations okay. from politics because I think that's the easiest way. Yeah. But even if somebody says, here's a million pounds and it's fine, I don't really want anything in exchange. Even if that's true, no one will believe it. And there's no real way to know how, how true it is. <laughs> People have talked about greenwashing and the mm. ways that companies with terrible track records have given money to particular charities and therefore appeared uh, in the public to be doing a good thing. What do you make of that? Yeah, so there is this growth in greenwashing and you know, I th actually I think increasingly people can see through it. They can say, look, you are in fact a fossil fuel company or a tobacco company. Mm -hmm. And actually the fact that you also sponsor this nice athletics thing, yeah, so what? I decided to leave Canary Wharf and do something a bit more worthwhile and I thought that was going to be a million miles away in developing countries and then there are people in bins sleeping around the corner from your flat. So start there first and see what happens. With the open table it's helped the giving not to be about me. So I'm able to recognise when I am being ripped off and give anyway. When you said, turn the other cheek when someone hits you, that's a form of power. If someone's just hit you and then you give them the other cheek, what you've basically said is that didn't hurt. Mm. You know, I I'm going to fulfill my mission anyway. Mm. Um, and that's a power mm. in itself. An example of just how hardwired this whole notion of sharing or giving might, might be is the way in which children, almost from as early as they can walk, love to offer gifts they will come and bring something to you to show and usually quite happy if you take it from them so it's not necessarily just showing they are giving. Increasingly what you see are how many similarities there are across species than differences. I wouldn't be surprised if you went, say, amongst Corvids you might find exactly the same kind of sharing behaviours as you would amongst human children. I'm here with psychologist and dancer Nikki Clayton. 
Nikki, among the birds that you study, how does giving play out? Gift giving plays out in at least two ways amongst the corvids. The males, during the breeding season, feed the females. And the other kind of gift giving that we've seen is that crows will bring gifts to people that feed them. Why do corvids give? I think the importance of it is for attaining and maintaining a social relationship with another. The amount of food and object sharing that they do seems to determine the strength of the pair bond and is used to keep the pair bond going throughout their lives. So you recently wrote a paper about meerkats in which you described them as indiscriminate altruists. What did you mean by that? So most adults don't reproduce. They help to raise the pups of a couple of individuals who do. And the main way they do this is by feeding. So they'll go and dig up a scorpion and they, rather than eat it themselves, they'll give it to one of the pups. So we wanted to know whether they do this more often when they're more closely related genetically to those pups. And the answer was no. Um, they, they appear to be indiscriminate in this respect. Timbles. I think there's been a, a kind of historical narrative of animals being, and humans as well, being competitive animals, selfishly driven. Dawkins, to be honest, the selfish gene, it really accentuated this idea of survival of the fittest and everything. But I think the crucial thing is that this doesn't need to be in conflict with the idea that animals or humans also cooperate. And so there's nice data from wild chimpanzees showing they get an oxytocin surge when they share food. So sharing feels good to them. Bonobos, for example, will share food voluntarily for which they don't get any reward. So there's an experiment which showed that one bonobo in one cage it has the opportunity to release a banana for another bonobo in another cage and that, that they won't ever have a chance to meet. This removes the reciprocity issue and they still do do it. I think in modern society we often focus on individual goals and I think actually apes can teach us the value of the of the group. So this was all donated by a local primary school called Harry Gosling and this is all of our produce which will last us for the next three months. So again another act of giving. So the school actually contacted us and heard about what we're doing in the local community and said we would really love to give to this project. So the year two children came together and they also wrote little notes to the homeless people. It was quite hard hitting. So a lot of the homeless people, when they read the notes from the children, they actually started to cry. Um, it was just so honest and authentic and they were really just wishing them the best. It's deeply challenging to know at the end of the night that I'm going to go home and some of the people I'm with are not. But I think you, we need to be willing to um, begin to engage at levels that make us uncomfortable and make us think. And when it comes to Christian theology, why is the idea of the gift so central? There's quite a bit of interest in theology in the idea of the non-zero sum, which is that more of this doesn't mean less of that. So we think about Jesus, he's not less human for being divine. Our action is not diminished for the fact that God's involved in it. One person's benefit is not diminished from the fact that someone else also benefits. I think it's an attractive vision of how things can or should be. Clearly there is at the very heart of the faith a sense of being willing to pour out our lives. One of the problems about the sacrifice ideal is it can be used to justify the oppression of people who you say, well, you should be giving yourself up for me. It can be dangerous also, and it's politicized and used to persuade people to go off and give their lives in war. Now you've spoken a bit about the spiritual dangers of really wholeheartedly embracing that thoroughly altruistic vision. Yeah. What, what did you mean by that? I suppose that, so W.H. Alden, the poet, said once that uh, if God has just put me into the world to serve others, then what are the others for? I mean, obviously people who are selfish have a vision of the world where they're at the centre, 
uh, and everyone else is just to be used. But I think there's also a problem with putting yourself at the centre, thinking everyone is just there to be helped. I think a kind of Christian vision of community. But if that's actually a community that anyone can join, then you've got to learn how to receive that love as well as to give it. What's significant about having a table and sharing it with people who are homed and those without homes? What's significant about it is that it's very reciprocal. We are open to receiving from the homeless people as well. Sometimes they'll buy things and put it down. The word that strikes me the most is to all and giving to all and receiving from all. Yeah. Everybody has a capacity to give. Yeah. It's our attitude to other people and our willingness to cooperate and share that is more fundamental to being human than our symbolic skills, our language skills. What's the greatest gift that you've been given? I have to say love. I think love, trust and respect from those that you love is probably the best gift in the world. Perhaps that and I suppose the other one is the gift of a healthy life. What's the most memorable gift that you've been given? In my life? My husband and children. Me and my wife. Life. Her. <laughs> <laughs> it's of course my teddy bear. And his name is uh, Pooh Teddy David Gabriel Vincent Paul Carlson Vrangsha the first. And I got him when I was nine. It's our grandchildren. Truly our grand. We've got four gorgeous grandchildren. We all have the power to give. And when we give, whether our love, our time or attention, new relationships might begin to emerge. What do you think? When we give, does it matter if we take as well? <laughs>